Good morning, and uh, thank you to Brian for the introduction, the emceeing, and to Jim for uh, going through all that fantastic content about the Linux Foundation and uh, CNCF. And so I get to take a little bit of a step up and uh, talk big picture about some of the trends in open source and where they've come from. Uh, I'm Dan Kahn, Executive Director of CNCF. We're the nonprofit organization that hosts these projects, helps organize this event. And uh, here's a picture of our much smaller conference two years ago in Berlin. Let us zoom in on the graffiti. Uh, orchestration, containerization, microservices. Our shorthand for explaining cloud native. Last year, our technical oversight committee came up with a much more expansive characterization. The CNCF cloud native definition version 1.0. It includes ideas like declarative APIs, resiliency, observability, and ecosystem of open source vendor neutral projects. One word that's not included in the definition is Kubernetes. That's because Kubernetes is a leading cloud native implementation, but certainly not the only one. So why are we at KubeCon and not a conference about a different cloud native platform? Or more succinctly, why Kubernetes? Let's travel back in time a bit and look at the question of why certain technologies win out. We'll start in the year 2004. A social networking entrepreneur met with a number of Silicon Valley investors, including Napster founder Sean Parker. The founder launched at his Ivy League university, dropped out of school, and then expanded the social network to many other campuses, building the site to hundreds of thousands of users. I'm talking, of course, about campus network, started at Columbia University by Adam Goldberg a month before Mark Zuckerberg launched the Facebook at Harvard. So why were these two incredibly similar sites both developed at essentially the same time? I found my answer playing a game. How many of you have ever played Sid Meier's Civilization? Yeah, me too, and Civ 6 is my 12-year-old's favorite game. One of Sid Meier's greatest innovations was to explicitly map out a technology tree. If you want to add knights as a warrior for your civilization, you need to have first developed the stirrup to domesticate horses and metalworking to create armor. The development of new technologies depends on the availability and sometimes the ubiquity of other technologies. Both Campus Network and the Facebook depended on personal computers and the internet being available in dorm rooms, as well as a whole set of other technologies, such as algorithms for efficient graph traversal. And this process of simultaneous invention is something that we see throughout history. Let's go back further in time to 1858. This is a picture of the British naturalist who collected beetles and spent his formative years as a scientist documenting the natural history of Wales. He went on a multi-year expedition in the mid-1800s to collect specimens. After reading a book on population growth by Thomas Malthus, he formulated the theory of evolution. I'm not speaking of Charles Darwin, another British naturalist who collected beetles, studied Welsh natural history, went on a multi-year expedition, and 11 years earlier, after reading the same book by Malthus, discovered evolution. No, the man on the left is Alfred Russell Wallace, and history knows him as the other person who discovered evolution. Quote, the centrifugal governor of the steam engine checks and corrects any irregularities almost before they become evident. And in like manner, no deficiency in the animal kingdom can ever reach any magnitude. That's Wallace describing control theory, which is central to how both evolution and Kubernetes work. We can go back further to 1687 and see Gottfried Leibniz and Isaac Newton independently discovering the calculus. And finally, we have John Tyndall. He is often credited with first establishing in 1859 that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that leads to climate change. Standing in for Eunice Newton Foote, we have the cover of her scientific paper. She made and published the greenhouse gas discovery three years earlier. Despite her prior publication and also being a signatory at Seneca Falls, the first women's rights convention, 
no image of foot has been found, and her discovery was not credited until 2010. Simultaneous invention is the concept that certain ideas are in the air. The prerequisite inventions have been made, and now it just takes a spark of creativity and a lot of effort to build the next step in the technology tree. Simultaneous invention is a common occurrence through history. So now, let's return to this decade and the cloud-native definition. A number of companies have faced the challenge of building and running applications at scale. And with the prerequisite technologies having become available, including the Internet and Linux, a Cambrian explosion of container orchestrators was created. These systems, each of which follow the cloud-native definition, enabled these companies to reach web scale with fewer servers and fewer staff than would have been possible before. They include Alibaba Sigma, Amazon Apollo, Apache Mesos, Baidu Matrix, Cloud Foundry Garden and Diego, CoreOS Fleet, Docker Swarm, Facebook Tupperware, and finally, Google, Borg, and Omega. No, just kidding, we're only halfway through. There's also HashiCorp Nomad, IBM Platform Symphony, Joint Triton, Lyft V3 Infra, Microsoft Service Fabric, Netflix Titus, Rancher Cattle, Red Hat OpenShift V2 Broker, Spotify Helios, Tencent Gaia, Twitter Aurora, and Uber Peloton. <sighs> so, how were all of these organizations able to develop similar approaches to their scaling challenges? You could say that the prerequisite technologies were in the air. And as Isaac Newton wrote, we stand on the shoulders of giants, which is what Newton was doing when he adapted that saying from Bernard de Chartres, which is what I am doing in that I reuse those two quotes from the fantastic video essay, Everything is a Remix. But now, let's return firmly to the present. We're all here at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, Open Source Summit, Shanghai. Many other technologies had to be developed before Cloud Native could emerge. But why aren't we at HeliosCon or MatrixCon or ApolloCon? These are the results of web searches on some of the open source Cloud Native offerings over the last three years. What is responsible for Kubernetes' extraordinary growth? Let's finally try to answer the earlier question, why Kubernetes? In my view, there are three main reasons. Number one, it works really well. Kubernetes was not just built on a decade of learning within Google from Borg and Omega, but has now also incorporated key architectural ideas from Red Hat, Huawei, and dozens of other companies. Number two, vendor-neutral open source. Enterprises that are going to build on top of a platform want to see multiple companies backing a technology, so they're not locked into a single vendor. No one wants to have to pay a platform tax for the lifetime of their application. From the beginning, Google explicitly encouraged developers from other companies to take leadership roles. In fact, CNCF was created within the Linux Foundation to provide a neutral home for cloud-native technologies and has worked through programs like Certified Kubernetes to ensure that the ecosystem does not fragment. Number three, it's the people. Kubernetes, like Soylent Green, is people. The project has been developed by an extraordinary group of contributors, has done an impressive job onboarding new users, what's been called the time to first serotonin, and has explicitly worked to narrow the distance between the steps of the contribution ladder, from user to contributor to reviewer to leader. So these are my three ideas on the reasons for success, but I'd love to hear yours either in person here at the conference or on WeChat or Twitter. And the thought I want to leave you with is how deliberate all three elements of Kubernetes' success have been. To quote the climate writer David Roberts, stitching things together, building up institutions that work, figuring out how to keep diverse interests on the same page is difficult emotionally and intellectually. 
the magic of the technology tree is that we can only be here because our predecessors have developed extraordinary innovations like Linux and TCP IP, and in a bigger sense, evolution, the calculus, and the cause of climate change. And the work that we're doing here together this week, building on top of the shoulders of giants, may be neither swift nor easy, but is also laying the foundations of the next generation of innovations, which are even now being built on top of Kubernetes and Linux. We, all of us, are part of the cloud-native community. I entreat us to collaborate together in a spirit of kindness and with an awareness of history this week and hereafter. Thank you very much.